So I was the first female to win Adults People Choice at NNL West this year in California. It was the first time that both females won for the Adult and Juniors People's Choice Awards. Hopefully we can get more females and juniors to come out here and to give it a go for building a race car. If you have a passion for cars, I'm telling you, you're missing out if you're not here competing with us. We're here at the final GSL. I'm with Kristen Aslanian, and we're checking out her four builds. Which of these was your first build? The Porsche GT1 was my first build ever. The Sauber C9 mm -hmm. was my second build. The Ford GT was my third build, and then my baby, the Volkswagen <laughs> Porsche, is... That you modified. Yes, which is completely modified. And it's, it's kind of crazy, because being here at GSL, I really had an opportunity to go through and explain it. One of my golden rules is when you start a model kit, and by the time you take it to the first show, you're done. If there's mistakes, you drop it. You can even see that I even have a crack on the windshield from it dropping. But at the same time, it's something that you kind of embrace Yes. holding that character of, of how that build is because obviously as my skills started to advance leading up, leading up to even the Sauber, I could have always gone back to the Porsche GT1 to make modifications but at the same time there's something about capturing that like a timepiece that it is. is just beautiful. Well, it's a piece of art as it ages. It's it develops its own character. As it gains more cracks and the decals <laughs> yeah, yeah. and the paint starts to fade. It's all part of it and you just embrace it. So the first build you do has got probably the most difficult decals I can imagine. Yes. I mean, you did the build and then you have hours, I'm sure, into those decals. So I can show this. My, my biggest success decal-wise was getting that tiny little decal on the door handle. I think at that point that I was able to do that, it was yeah. a major milestone. And like I learned little things. Like for me and some people, they can lay one decal on one side go to the opposite and do the exact same thing. I learned very quickly, that's not for me. So what I did with this build, I was laying down decals that are along the border, literally of, of almost what would be the side skirt. I was able to do the exact same thing on the other side, but also by laying them at the same time, making sure that there was that even factor to it as well. So. Were the decals difficult? Absolutely. And the part that I've never told anyone that you guys are gonna hear right now yeah. is that it's definitely not perfect. There's a lot of flaws, but little things like first time doing decals when I had little tears and there's little marks in there, I was able to find the right color paint to go back in and put a tiny little dot that blended it. From a little bit of afar, you can't really see too much of it. My first build ever, but you can see that there are flaws, there's fingerprints and little things because I was still in the phase of learning. No worries. It's perfectly gorgeous. Thank you, I appreciate that. You've added in the back the gold. Yes. Is, that's not part of the kit. That was, that was up to your discretion to yeah. detail that. So one thing that my mentor, Daniel Valencia, taught me, and he's also Skill Freaks and Dan Val Models online, oh, but yeah. something he was teaching me is, is what gives that type of shine. And yeah. his models always have it, but <laughs> he ended up teaching me about, hey, look at different candy and look at different wrappers oh, and things that have yeah. that, that heavy shine. So it's led to every time I see my mom buys yeah. chocolate, I'm like, right. hey, when you're done eating that, save that wrapper for me. Because I'm like, I need right. it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, right. so like for this one, the yeah. main details were the dash was customized, which is hard to see. I added two wires for the engine, and then obviously that gold little touch. That's a great piece. And those Tamiya kits are great to build. Oh, yeah. I mean, the assembly's great, and then you have all those decals to work with. You know the joke about the Tamiya kits, right? They say you put the kit and the glue into a box and shake it, and the kit, you just open the box and it's built. She's with Lionheart Motors, that's your business? It's yeah. gonna eventually hopefully become a business. So my dad passed away. I grew up in the automotive industry because of him, selling okay. car and truck parts with A to Z motoring. My parents are Armenian from Ethiopia. My last name, Aslanian, also means lion. So I ended up getting that Lionheart and then motoring to kind of honor that it's everything from real cars to building a race car to scale modeling and beyond. So. That's great heritage. Thank you. And through that, 
you have an automotive knowledge because you not only built basically some box kits, but you've highly modified some. So your second build was the Sauber? Sauber C9. So this was, look, again, you can see flaws. The biggest one was the headlights. A big one was that I put way too much glue. And I was still, you're still learning. I'm still sure. going through be beginner mistakes for sure. But it was the first time that I did a hyper, highly, hyper, I call it, yeah. detailed engine. It looks great. And there were little things like there's no Mercedes-Benz decals that, that from that centerpiece, you know, you don't see that it comes in carbon. But when you look at actual photos, you'll see that that's how it's done. I realize that sometimes with some of these builds, they do so much with the Ford GT and the Sauber C9 to hide their engine and what they're doing. So it got to the point that luckily the box is detailed enough that that was the start. But I was able to start looking up cockpit photos and really doing more homework to the point that, you know, I was able, and, and this is the hard part, the hoses don't run through my body. They don't run all the way through, but I tried my best. They don't have to. Yeah. It's all an illusion. It's all beautiful. We all accept what's there. And you then progress from that to this, to doing a lot of research to understand and then add that detail yes. and all that texture. Really nice. And then it's odd because some people say, hey, why is it the Sauber C9 engine is so detailed? But when you got to the Ford GT, it was not as detailed. And they're right. And it had to do with the first part is that you can look at this, but this was the first custom livery with decals and custom paint. So I completely came up with this. I was inspired, <laughs> inspired by the Bugatti. If you see that orange little line that runs around the door frame yeah. and you know, adding little vents and little touches. I also built fans in the very front as well. So adding those little things, but the one part I didn't get around to, even though there is some detailing within the engine, yeah. I didn't go super crazy with wiring and making sure that there were brake lines. You'll see a brake line, but it wasn't full because there was a show coming up. Right. And all the guys right. were like, you need to bring it to the show. Yeah. So at right. that point, I said, okay, I'm going to skip out on doing a super highly detailed engine. Mm -hmm. And let's let, leave this as a timepiece of my first custom livery, custom paint job. So in doing that detail, is that the pleasure of the build? If you don't see some of the details you add, let's say in the interior, yeah. like you said, you had a highly detailed interior in one of the cars. Yeah, it gets buried, but isn't it the pleasure of just doing it and you know it's there? Yes and no, because I think the most yeah. exciting part is actually having someone give you that little flashlight test. And when they come up and they start to notice the details by looking at it at a certain angle, that's where I'm like, okay, this is cool. And it all goes into it, because there's a lot of little decals, and this one too also has a highly detailed interior. And that's the reason that if you look at my first and second build that both yes. have windows, I realized no one's gonna look at my interior or see it. I got to the point that for this build and my last build that I said, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the windows open. So in doing the interior that way, you're in essence giving any judge or anyone looking at it that, that little Easter eggs kind of surprise yes. to get in there and go, oh, okay. I have something cool to look at in here. And it's cool too, because like a lot of those people that like to kind of discover those hidden secrets and details on your build, it's, it's exciting to kind of keep the momentum going. And luckily I've had an amazing mentor that, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's an opal that sits right back here. And that is the level of detail I would love to get to. So having someone that's a mentor and teaching you about this really helps out as well. So Daniel Valencia was my coworker and we started traveling together, carpooling, just to save money on gas. We rotated on days to drive. And that's where he realized that I had a passion for cars because it's what I grew up in. But eventually I had a rear-ended accident. I was with my mom and we got hit from the rear end. When I got out of the hospital and I was recovering, I had complete stroke symptoms, a drooping face. Uh, I had things where my vision was blurred. My hands, even though they're okay right now, were extremely shaky all the time. And it was my coworker, Daniel, that came to me 
and said, hey, have you ever tried about scale modeling? I'm gonna bring you this kit. He said, what do you wanna build? I said, I wanna build a Porsche GT1. He's like, where did you get that from? And I'm like, cause I love Porsche. So he had this kit here sitting at home and he simply came up to me and said, look, I'll make you a deal. I'll bring you this kit. I'll show you what you need to do and I'm gonna leave it with you. Yeah. Take your time, go slow, do not cut yourself because I was on Plavix and aspirin. So it started off with scalpels and, and taking it slow and you know, it's not the best built because at that time with my shaking, with my vision, there was a lot of like personal battles I was trying to get through health wise. Yeah, but you got a lot more out of that build than most people would. It was good for you, good for your health. I still, <laughs> yes, and that's, and that's the crazy part that people seem to miss. You know, people look at it like scale modeling. These people stay indoors, they build all day, but it's like, in reality, the immense like stress that it can take off of you, or the way that it can help your actual, you know, motor skills or basic fundamental things, or even feeding your creativity. Yes. It's so big and it's such a reward to be able to do that as well. So, but that's what got me started because of my passion for cars and someone, Daniel Valencia, that kind of came out to go, how can I take what I do and love for a passion and be able to help this girl? I'm oh lucky. God. I am lucky, oh lucky. Well, and he's the guy that introduced us. Big yes. thanks. To That's him. awesome. In your V-Dub. Uh, this is the ultimate monster. So it was inspired by Time Attack and Hill Climbers, but it is completely customized. It's the first time that I did a custom wide body, the side skirts, and people always ask, how did you do this guys? side skirts? How did you do this? And the part that they miss is all it is, is rectangular styrene. And it's shaved, and I added the vent, and I just made sure to blend it as well as I could, because again, there still are imperfections. You talk about these imperfections, but... I will not point them out. I learned better. <laughs> yeah, and then if, if there's also two custom intercoolers that I've added as well different scoops. Even the window, you can see, is broken down into two different parts where there's a scoop that allows air to continue to cool off that engine as you're racing, too. So you're, you're doing engineering as in part of your modification? Doing my best. Your knowledge of yes. knowing that cooling is necessary. For the engine, yes. So was that scratch building, or are you pulling some parts from other kits? It's a combination. For example, the wide body and the side skirts are scratch built. And there's also mm -hmm. a oil catch can in the back behind this little scoop that I've gone ahead and scratch built as well. And then the rest of it, like the engine for this, was pulled from a Formula One uh, Ferrari, a V12. V12 and monster of an engine. Yeah. And I was able to add the two twin turbos and just continue with building on this. But the crazy part is that this build came after I started working on and building a real 944 Porsche race car. No kidding. Yeah, so the implementation of working on my own race car and taking things like even the, there's a quick disconnect for the steering wheel and if you look right there, you can see on the inside that there's a hook hanging from the roll cage and the quick disconnect steering wheel is resting on top of it. And that along with the roll cage and certain aspects of this are strictly exactly what's on my 944 race car. So by building that, it made it easier to implement into something that's more realistic. So when you're working on your race car, you're also thinking about this. How can I turn this into a scale model? <laughs> so, this as well, but I've also done hoses and yeah. detailing. And you're picking up photo etch for that and yes. other detail parts. I've gotten pretty lucky with going to scale modeling events that have trade shows. Yeah. Because there you'll end up walking around and you'll find a kit of PE and it depends on the cost, but sometimes you're lucky, you're able to negotiate the cost or buy in bulk yeah. and it helps so much. So when it comes to having like for these two both, where there were custom liveries and I was pulling decals from a bunch of different kits, it really helps out with being able to go to trade shows, hunting down those different decals and PE. And then next thing you know, it's almost like you have an entire, you know, army of materials ready to be used. Your photo etch file is getting bigger and bigger. It is. You probably did well this morning here at the oh, vendors. I got in trouble today. So I finally, yeah, yeah I got a 935 
which is a Porsche I've been oh, yeah. wanting so bad. I think it's the Dunlop Porsche. And then I also got a Porsche, one of the original tractors that I've been trying oh, to hunt yeah. down. Yeah. And it was closed box too, so I'm like, that's amazing. And then there's one other Porsche kit I found today that I was like, I better leave this area now because this is my holy grail for the trade show. And before I spend more, I'm like, I better go. So you're a PCA member? And you track I your car? am a PCA member, yeah. okay. and I have not tracked it yet. Okay. So yeah, I started. That's why Lionheart Motoring got started. It's kind of always been a dream of mine to own a Porsche and to, to track a car. Yeah. So now I have one of those done. And I was so lucky to find a 944 Porsche for $750, but it was a piece of junk, and it had everything from bugs in the interior. It wasn't running. It was a mess. I was able to start with two different options: restore it or turn it into a race car. And at the end of the day, to me, it's a lot cheaper to build a race car, in a sense, yeah. than to build to fully yeah. restore a car. So out comes the carpet, a carpet, out comes the headliner. It was amazing. And in comes the cage. Not even the carpet, it was like the internal mat of the car. Everything was so heavy. Even, yeah. even the antenna has an entire motor. And, oh, and when sure. I got Throw to, yeah, I had to pull it out from under the wheel well. When I took that thing out and I'm holding it, I'm like, why would they make it so heavy? So, so being able to delete that, the AC unit, certain components of it, and, and I started a new hobby with drilling holes, you know, and I'm lucky. I'm lucky that my best friend used to be a race fabricator. Because as soon as I sat in his E30 and I sat in a race car for the first time and I looked around and said, how did you do this? How did you do that? He's like, I built it. I did this. And I'm like, what can we do to turn my Porsche into a race car? So. We started that journey of building a roll cage and it has a long way to go, but it's heading down that path. Nice. You're having a ton of fun. Oh, yeah. yeah, in scale and full size. This is great. I'm so glad we were introduced. Yes. I thank you for this great talk. Good luck on everything. Thank you, and this has been an honor. Thank you guys.